What is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to do the response video to the Q&A that we posted on Instagram a week ago, a week, or a week and a half ago, something like that, where I told you guys to ask me some questions, whether it's ophthalmology, medical school, residency, fellowship, life, whatever. Um, whatever questions you guys had, I said if we got 20 questions, we would make a uh, video doing a Q&A type thing. And so we got many more than 20. So uh, we will do some of those questions in this video. Uh, and if you guys like it, leave a like on it, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, and go follow me on Instagram, Dr. Eyeball MD. And we can do more of these. We could do these on maybe like a twice a month or something or more often basis if you guys find it help. So without further ado, let's actually get into the questions and uh, address some of your guys's questions that you had on the Instagram. All right, so first question is, what's your least favorite and favorite thing about being a doctor? So my favorite thing is definitely getting to do surgery. I really like operating, especially on people's faces. Uh, the surgeries are so much fun and I could do them all day, every day, uh, into the night. It doesn't bother me if I'm in the OR. I like it. So by far and away, my favorite thing about being a doctor is getting to do surgery. I would have a hard time being a doctor if I couldn't do procedures uh, and this, the specialty that I was in wasn't procedural. Um, my least favorite thing is probably um, dealing with a lot of the bureaucracy and the kind of the red tape that medicine has found itself just wrapped up in uh, these days. That is really annoying because the annoying thing about it isn't that stuff itself it's that you you've spent a quarter of a century in education and learning a skill uh, that's very valuable and helpful and then you feel tethered down by things that seem very superfluous and things that just and they become you you feel tethered down by things that can be just like an annoyance uh, when you're trying to do your job you have this skill you know how to implement it and then you can't for these silly maybe uh, logistical or bureaucratic reasons. That's to me one of the most frustrating things about medicine. Second question, as an optho resident, uh, what's your advice? So my advice as an optho resident, I don't know who, I guess they mean as an optho resident, uh, I don't know if they're an optho resident. So my advice to someone who is an ophthalmology resident is to, uh, and I've made videos on this, is to try to learn the right things and for the right reasons. So what I mean by that is Understand now in residency what it is you're going to need to know how to do uh, when you're out past residency. So try to look into the future in your future career and realize what it's gonna, what you're going to need to feel competent and ready to go practice and do surgery on your own. Uh, and try to build those skills in residency while you have somebody there to help you. Uh, don't get lost in the minutia of the the board studying and stuff like that. Learn the relevant clinical things to make you a good doctor. That's my advice. Third question, how do I get involved with surgical tool development slash research as a med student? So research is pretty easy. You just reach out to somebody in the ophthalmology department, uh, one of the attendings or the faculty or somebody in the education department. Reach out to them, ask if there's a project you can get involved with. There typically is. So that's the easiest way to get involved with research. Um, surgical tool development, this is something that I've kind of worked in uh, in residency that's a little more complicated oftentimes you'll have to just make a connection with somebody in a company uh, or just kind of go at it on your own um, and kind of start building that that from the ground up that's a much more detailed topic that we would need a whole video to discuss uh, and a video that i have actually made i just haven't published but um, fourth question reasons why you picked ophthalmology there are many videos about this on my channel uh, but the main ones are because it's a surgical subspecialty it has good lifestyle it's happy people uh, and it's a large variety and large breadth those are some of the main reasons that i picked ophthalmology uh, it's a cool niche surgical subspecialty that's fun uh, and not soul sucking to do i guess if you had to put it in one sentence um, okay, next question. How did you decide between surgery or internal medicine internship before ophthalmology residency? So I did a transition year, which is kind of a hybrid between electives and some uh, internal medicine stuff and like a little bit of surgery rotations. So the transition year uh, was what I did because it was what was in the area where I was um, after medical school. So it was just the easiest thing to do at that point. Um, now, ophthalmology integrates the intern year, so you really don't have much of an option there at this point. So, um, Next question, would you be open to mentoring an African uh, in, uh, IMG interested in ophthalmology? 
Um, I really don't have a lot of time to like do specific one-on-one -on -one mentoring just because I'm so busy with fellowship. Although, let me know if you guys think it's a good idea, but I have thought about starting a business or a company around uh, a mentoring type service that would pair um, you know, medical students with mentors uh, and then it would we could rate the mentors based on how helpful they are uh, and then you know it would be kind of something based around that so that's a potential thing I've thought about but I personally don't have a lot of time to do mentoring one-on-one um, -on -one, but I do make these videos so they are kind of mentoring to the broad uh, population that may be interested in this stuff um, <laughs> next question who's your favorite co-fellow uh, Spencer and Parsha uh, next question, why did you choose UT Southwestern for residency? I did an away rotation here. Um, I did two away rotations as a medical student. This is one of the places I, I did one um, and I understood what it was, which is difficult and hard and not always the most pleasant experience, but uh, I saw the upsides to it, which is you get really good at surgery and you become a competent, confident person who's ready to go practice right after residency. Uh, and that's what I wanted. I want to be good surgically, clinically. Uh, so that's why I picked it. Um, and it did deliver on those things, in my opinion. Um, someone asks, my eyes are watering a lot and I think it's from my cataract. Is there an eye drop for that? I know who this is and they're trolling me. So there is actually eye drops for cataracts, believe it or not, for dogs uh, to try to reduce cataracts, not for humans. Uh, next question, how might a medical student get started in medical device? Actually, there may be those drops for humans, but I don't think any of that's FDA approved. Um, how might a medical student get started in medical device development slash in innovation? This is similar to the other question, um, but if you're a medical student, you know, it's, it's definitely tough. And for me, this was something that I just kind of started doing on my own and reached out to, I kind of built something and then developed a product that I could show to a company because uh, it's hard to get any company interested in your ideas as a medical student when you have no experience or any kind of backing to what you're saying. So if you can make it yourself first and then present it to a company, uh, you, may, you may be more successful that way. Um, next question, successful match into Optho is often a combination of blank. Um, that's a tough one, but I think you can look at it as having a foundation of, you know, good grades, good step scores, at least for now, while step scores are still a thing, um, and good letters of recommendation and a little bit of research, or at least, you know, having some research. Uh, that's the foundation. That's not going to get you in, in and of itself necessarily. Uh, and then if you want to have a quote unquote successful match, which to me would mean matching in you know, one of your top choices, uh, I think you need to do something to distinguish yourself. Um, but more than that is probably demonstrate to the program you want to match to why you want to match there and have kind of uh, shown that that is somewhere you want to be and done something to prove that. So if you can do that, I think your chances are better of a successful match. Next question, which subspecialty of ophthalmology would you say has the coolest intraocular surgeries? So personally, I think oculoplastics has the, some of the coolest surgeries. Retina has some cool uh, surgeries. If you're talking about intraocular surgeries, um, I personally think some of the complex anterior segment surgery is really cool. Uh, you know, all different types of anterior segment surgeons like comprehensive or cataract surgeons can do that, glaucoma surgeons, cornea surgeons. Uh, so that's to me some of the coolest is some of the, the reconstructive anterior segment stuff is cool. Um, a lot of retina surgery is pretty neat as well. That's what got me interested in ophthalmology in the beginning. But if I had to pick, I'd probably say some of the complex anterior segment uh, surgeries are some of the coolest. Um, how difficult is it for an IMG to get into optho residency in the US? There are statistics on this. It is definitely more, it is definitely harder for an IMG to get an ophthalmology residency over an allopathic U.S. graduate. Um, it's just the way it is, but it's not impossible. Uh, there are some, I've known some, there have been uh, at least one I can remember that came through our program uh, as a fellow after having done that, or a couple actually. Um, so it's doable, uh, but it's definitely harder, and I don't know the stats off the top of my head. Um, how much time were you able to spend with your wife as a resident? Uh, there were often uh, weeks, week-long stretches where we would just kind of see each other in passing. Uh, and not all of that is because of me, it's also a combination of her being a resident. 
uh, in internal medicine and pediatrics combined residency, which is much more difficult in terms of being time intensive than my residency. So the combination of me being in residency and her being in residency uh, would oftentimes mean that we, we wouldn't see each other uh, for, for some long stretches. So uh, that, is, that is definitely a tough part of having two, uh, having spouses both being in medicine. And we talk about this on the podcast. Check out the podcast on Call with Dr. Keenum if you haven't already. Next question is advice to reduce stress and anxiety during medical school. Um, I just say, just try to keep doing something that you like, some sort of hobby. Don't throw all your hobbies out the window. Hang on to something, whether it's working out, exercising, swimming, some sort of art or music. Make sure you keep doing something that's not medicine. Don't think that by giving up everything else, uh, you can be better at medicine. You gotta keep something or you'll just go insane. Um, next question. Hi, any tips for MS1 interested in optho, especially with step one being pass fail? Um, same thing as, you know, as I've said before, uh, show interest early, go do some shadowing in ophthalmology if you're an MS1. I think if I remember between MS1 and MS2, you often have that summer off to maybe spend some time shadowing or doing something within ophthalmology to decide if you actually want to do it. But also if you really do end up wanting to do it to show interest in the field, I think that might be a, a decent place to start. You could even try to start doing some research uh, if you wanted to do as, to do that as an MS1. Get involved in the uh, student interest group in ophthalmology. Um, if your school doesn't have one, like mine did not at the time, start one. I just started one, so uh, that's an option. Any tips for studying while also stay, staying sane as an optho uh, first year? So this is tough, especially where I did residency. There wasn't so much time necessarily for studying just because the work hours are pretty long and intensive. Uh, but I would say if you can just do a little bit each day, uh, count that as a win, you know. Uh, just try to do something. Uh, and then I think if you can study something that you saw that day, so something interesting you didn't understand, just study uh, that thing that night and try to remember like one learning point a day, I think is a good good thing to do. Um, next question, it says, silly question mark, but do orthoptists work closely with ophthalmologists in America, like in the UK? Uh, the orthoptists do work with us primarily in the pediatrics clinic. They help with um, measuring uh, deviations in alignment of the eyes so we can plan strabismus surgery. That's primarily where we work with the orthoptist. Um, how is how is the new surgical tool coming along? Uh, they're okay. Uh, I haven't been putting so much work into it just lately just because fellowship's been busy. Um, but I'm trying to get circle back to it. So uh, next question is hi from Kirthana. Hi Kirthana. Um, how often do you get to work on your medical device innovation slash inventions? as much as you want to in your free time. That's all free time. I don't have any time set aside to do these things. So you have to squeeze it in if you want to do it. Uh, next question, how much research should I do in med school to be competitive enough for ophthalmology residency? I don't know there's a specific amount here. Obviously, if you can get a publication, it looks better. Uh, it, you don't necessarily have to have one, um, but just showing some interest in, in, in ophthalmology and in doing research uh, would be ideal. I don't think there's a set amount there that you have to do. Uh, for me, I had one publication. Luckily, it was in JAMA Ophthalmology, so I think that looked good, but I don't, that's obviously not necessary, so. Um, one year of question, next question is, one year of college in residency, is there only one ophtho program or more that you can choose from? In residency, is there only one off the program or more that you can choose from. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Uh, next question. Least favorite subspecialty in ophthalmology? Uh, I would probably say uh, I'm not a huge fan of neuro-ophthalmology, although it is integrated into my fellowship as an oculoplastics fellow, um, just because there's a, a lack of uh, surgery, basically, in it. Um, and also, um, the problems can sometimes be so esoteric, and you don't. Op a lot of times you don't pin down an actual cause of things uh, or something that you can fix and so that bothers me. Uh, especially as a surgeon, it just kind of is annoying. Um, next question from Evan, who was a previous fellow. What is the CPT code for gold weight removal? That is an excellent question and we are actually doing that surgery tomorrow. So I will look and I will message you directly, Evan, because uh, we're doing that. It's interesting that you asked. Um, next question, ophthalmology or ENT question mark? Well, I'm going to say ophthalmology. Um, 
obviously I'm biased. Um, I was interested in ENT in medical school. I became less interested in ENT uh, later on. I, I think I would definitely not do it going back. It's just, I've seen some of those surgeries. It's just not appealing to me anymore. Now, facial reconstructive surgery as a fellowship after ENT might be one option I would do, but I wouldn't want to do just regular ENT. Um, next question, worst case is I don't match optho. Do you recommend reapplying? Uh, your match rate goes down if you reapply into ophthalmology, if you don't match the first time, but if it's something you really want to do, uh, then sure, you know, if it's your dream and you want to do it, I'm not going to tell you not to reapply because you may not match. Um, that's just a decision you have to make, but it is less likely each time I think that you apply. Um, I don't know those stats specifically. Uh, next question, how to manage time with duties and studies. So I guess that means like between work and studying, that's tough. You can try to squeeze it in the best you can, but you know, by and large, you learn by doing, uh, so it's on the job training. So most of what you're gonna learn is gonna be what you're doing and actually uh, the thing you're doing is gonna be the, the meat of what you need to know. Um, obviously you have to do some studying for the boards, but your clinical, what you can apply clinically is mostly what you're gonna learn uh, in the day-to-day -day work of the job. So. Uh, how did you make your notes during your residency? Didn't necessarily take notes during residency. We had lectures, we had didactics. I didn't take notes on the didactics. Um, so I didn't take notes per se, and I think note taking is probably not one of the most effective ways of studying. I think that's been shown. There's better ways like active recall, spaced repetition, flashcards, and, and things like that, rather than just taking notes. Um, what I did do occasionally was write down like, a thing to look up if I didn't understand it or or like one learning point so I would actually each day write one thing that I learned so if you want to think of that as a note um, that's kind of what I did um, are you still taking undergrad pre-med students for shadowing slash observership I don't know that I was ever doing that but uh, so no not directly I'm a fellow so you can't just come like shadow shadow me just out of the blue it's not really a thing uh, unless you're rotating at the university. Um, although if you are, you can come shadow me. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. Do you still do extra cap or intra cap cataract? I don't do any cataracts. Um, and I never did an extra, or I never did a, I never did an intracapsular cataract in, in the sense we're just taking out the cataract in whole without making a rexus, I guess. Uh, and I never did a, like a manual small incision extra cap type thing where you deliver the whole lens through a, an incision. I always phacoed everything. Um, I was never not able to get something out with phaco, but I know there are instances where that's the case, but I don't really do cataract surgery anymore. So, um, do you know any basic opto books, etc., that one could read while in med school? Thanks. I have a video on this, so go, go back like a year or two in the videos on my YouTube channel, and I have a whole video about uh, resources for all different levels. If you're in med school, I'd probably start with something like Optho Books or just the Will's Eye Manual would probably be a good place to start. All right, guys, so that's all we have time for. It's been 20 minutes of questions. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was informative. If you liked it, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, go follow me on Instagram, Dr. EyeballMD, and we will do more of these Q&A style uh, videos if you, if you find it helpful. So maybe in another week or two, I'll post another uh, I'll post another question, like Q&A thing on Instagram story, and you can ask questions there. Um, whatever you want to ask me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be about medicine or ophthalmology. Um, I know a few other things. So anyways, I hope you guys liked it. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.